Aye. So you make a video, you say, that's it. Wrapping it up here, mate, and then... Here I am, making, <laughs> making another video. Ah, oh, keep your traps on you. Aye, in that last QNAP video, uh, <laughs> I spent about a couple of minutes in the middle talking about backups. It was the video about what happened next with the QNAP thing and did I get my data back. I'm getting some feedback and let's, I mean, let's not beat around the bush, criticism from people saying, you know, I've give out the wrong message about backups. With the with the irony being, I, I completely agree with everything everyone's saying to me. So I've, I've obviously not explained myself very clearly in that video. Uh, so I, I normally... I would just be like, well, it's your problem. If you've, if you've misunderstood what I've said or, or if I've not explained myself correctly and it still can be misinterpreted, ah, oh, oh, just move, let's just move on. It doesn't matter. But this does. This, this is backups, right? This is, this is not to be joked around with. And it's quite close to my profession as well. Uh, it might, might make people chuckle, but I'm a data management consultant. Like I've been banging the drum about backups in businesses for the last 20 odd years. Like I've seen and witnessed the damage that can happen if companies don't have backups. Uh, it's been my job to manage backup or create backup strategies, test backups, uh, regularly restore them, validate them, and make sure that in the event of a disaster, data can be restored. And I've had to do it many, many times. I've had to do it the last couple of weeks. So, yeah, I'm all too familiar with how important backups are. It's not it's not a new concept to me. And um, what I was trying to do in that QNAP video was not generalize the entire world of backups. I was trying to ring fence the discussion in a, to, to a very specific set of circumstances and a very specific set of people, which was the, the typical end user of QNAP devices, that being the home user. I probably made a mistake by grouping in wedding photographers into the discussion that I was given and also by using my circumstances uh, because yeah I think I, I put a foot wrong there as well I was saying look I didn't back my data up and I feel okay doing that because I can do x y and z and uh, yeah a few people have said look mate well yeah you're quite tech savvy though so you can probably handle things in the event of a disaster but you're saying this other people might hear what you're saying and follow suit and it's a bad message to give. And yeah, yeah, you're right. Actually, you are right on that. Ash, that was a poor message to give. I sort of lost sight of who I was talking to, how many people could potentially see that. So I want to correct that in here. So the message really is pretty simple. There's, there's no ambiguity around backups. Uh, I want to be crystal clear on this. Backups are the most important thing in the world. Your data does not exist unless it exists more than once. Unless you want your data gone like the darkness of dawn, you back it the hell up. You need a backup strategy. You need to have your data copied either on-site or off-site. There's no downsides to it. There's no cons to backing data. If you can, if you're able to, back your bleeding data up. The argument that I was trying to make, though, with the 3 two, one thing, which I think, again, has riled a few people up, uh, probably understandably, because again, I don't think I explained it very well. As I said, it's not reasonable to expect home users to take a copy of the data and back it up off-site. I kind of stand by that to a certain degree. I'm still not saying people shouldn't. If, if people can, do it. I also said, imagine if every household in the world was to take all of the data and back it up off-site. It would be a bit, like, logistically, a bit of, a bit of a nightmare. Like every household would have a copy of somebody else's data. Do you know what I mean? Like how it, it would just, it, it's just not going to happen. And that's where I was coming from. It's just not going to happen. So sure, give the advice. Say that's what people should do. My point kind of was people just aren't doing it. They're not going to do it. And me personally, I wouldn't expect people to do it either. And I was coming from the angle of the typical QNAP end user. I wasn't thinking about IT professionals. I wasn't thinking about IT tech support technicians and sysadmins. I was thinking about the average residential user. Is it reasonable to expect that person to have thought to back their data up off site? No. And that's evidence made by the fact that the ransomware attack has made a quarter of a million dollars. You know, they didn't make a quarter of a million dollars because everyone had their data backed up. They made a quarter of a million dollars because not many people had their data backed up. So I was kind of barking up the right tree there. Uh, so again, to be, <laughs> to be clear, people should have absolutely 
just saying they just they just don't they're not doing it and they it's because it's just not doing stuff like that it's just not up on the priority list of things people do day in and day out in their lives. I keep staring at this guy's house over the road. I'll give you a good example. And this is just a random house that I'm picking on here. That house over there on the left with a grey front. Bloke lives there called Jim. Jim, 85, fit as a butcher's dog. Trixie, he's always up to something. I say Jim, he isn't. But let's just say he's a, a hobbyist collector of World War II aircraft videos and data sheets and photos. He goes out to trade shows and air shows and he takes a lot of photos and videos of World War II aircraft. He's built up a decent collection of, uh, of nerdy videos and stuff and he starts to run out of space. One Christmas, his son says, Dad, do you know what? I'm going to buy you a NASBOX. Jim now has more space than he knows what to do with. He's got this NASBOX in the corner of the office. It's all the space he could ever wish for. Do you think Jim... The 85-year-old guy over the road in that house is going to back that data up and take it off site. Of course he isn't. Neither is his next-door neighbour. <laughs> Neither is my next-door neighbour. Nobody is. And that's not to say they shouldn't. He probably, he's not even probably, he should. If he wants that data safe, he should. What I'm saying and what I said was he, he's just not doing it and he's not going to. And there's many reasons why he's not doing that. It's a can of worms. In fact, it's a Tupperware box of caffeine fueled worms <laughs> because uh, this is why I, I kind of probably give out the wrong message because it, it is there's so many talking points on this and the likes of Jim why would he ever think that he has to do that when would it ever cross Jim's mind that he needs to back up his NAS box and take a copy of it out of his house what's the trigger for him to do that why would Jim even know his NASBOX is connected to the internet? It comes connected to the internet by default, off the factory. He's got no idea. He doesn't know that it's open to ransomware attacks. He doesn't know it's open to attackers and vulnerable. He just isn't aware. He doesn't visit forums that, where people talk about network stuff and NASBOXes and storage and network security and cyber attacks. He doesn't frequent those sort of places. He doesn't read news bulletins. He doesn't watch Linus Tech Tips. He doesn't watch... He's not in that world. He just, he's got a box that his son bought him. Maybe his son isn't either. He just Googled storage boxes and bought it, you know? So why would he ever do that? And I argue that that is the typical end user of a QNAP NAS box. You could argue differently. If you want to, that's fine. I'm happy to get into a discussion about it. You could, maybe the point of argument would be, well, you know, you hear a lot of people who, who are familiar with that. The thing is, the likes of Jim isn't going on to forums and saying, oh, I, how do I turn off my NAS box from the internet? I've tried port forwarding. I've tried this. I've tried that. You, you hear online of the people who are aware of it and they're talking about it. But the likes of Jim and the thousands, tens of thousands of other people who have these boxes, they're not going on the online and asking questions and getting into discussions about it. So yeah, that's kind of where I was coming from. Why would these people, why would these typical end users know to, to take a copy off site? Moving on, if I was to say to Jim, mate, all that data, mate, you've got a decent collection of stuff there. It's all digital. It's easy to lose that stuff. Eat. What if it gets damaged? What if it explodes? What if it goes up in smoke? Have you backed it up? Have you backed it up off, off site? He's going to say no. And if I say, well, maybe you should do it, mate. Maybe you should do it. He's going to say, yeah, you're probably right. I should. Yeah, I'll get my son to do it. And he'll forget about it. He'll not do it. He'll, not, he'll just not. Same with my, like my dad. My dad's got stuff on his PC, guitar videos, he's in his guitar concerts and stuff, and, you know, photos of his granddaughter, photos of holidays and whatnot. If I was to say to him, if you'd be devastated if you lost all that, copy it onto a drive, give it to me, I'll keep it in here in my house. Ah, oh, yeah, you're probably right. You know what, I'll, I'll, I, I, your mum's making tea now, I've got to go to work in a couple of hours. Ah, oh, we'll do it another time. We never will. You know, because it's just not a priority. It's not up there on the list of priorities, which then divides the audience because then half people will go, well, then it's your fault. You were, you were made aware of it. You didn't do it when you lost your data. It's on you. And my argument in my first video was, I am prepared to accept that risk if it's something within my control, like the house burning down, like vandalism. You know, I, I'm prepared to do what I can to minimize those things happening. 
Um, but not for a cune, like, not, like I said, Jim, you know, if he's doing whatever he can to minimize his NAS box being vandalized or damaged or going to fire, he might put it in a flame retardant box or whatever, you know, and then it gets smashed by this ransomware attack that he had absolutely no chance of, uh, of stopping. Why would he have known that he needed to back it up off site? He's, he's just not a tech savvy kind of guy. That's where I was coming from. But I'm not arguing with anyone about the, the validity of backups, you know. I definitely don't want it to come across like that because I understand that. Uh, and I made an error by not... Uh, by talking about my circumstances and maybe not making it as clear as, as I should have done. Uh, I'm going to do better for me. I'm going to back my own data up and do a better job of keeping copies of what I've got. Uh, you learn, you do, you learn, you live and learn. And yeah, even though, even though I said I'm not going to do anything different, really, uh, it, I've got plenty of storage here. It's not like it's going to cost me anything. I've got plenty of spare disks. I'm just going to copy the stuff that I really don't want to lose and put it on disks. And I still don't think I want to keep a copy of it out of the house. I still think that's overkill for a home user. Um, I'd still recommend someone else does it. I'm just not going to follow my own advice. I, I just, I, once it leaves my house and I put it in my parents' house, where does it go? It goes in the loft. Will I remember it's there? Will it get Will it get thrown away? Or I, I don't know. You know, that's now a snapshot of, in time from what the 14th of May 2021. That's what I wanted to clarify. Keep your data backed up. Do what you got to do. Uh, it's it's super important. And um, yeah, that's it. Thanks very much. I'll lock that on the head. Hopefully that's all I've got to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks. But genuinely, like everyone who watched the videos and felt compelled to, to talk about it, thanks. Like, ge like genuinely, I'm not being facetious or anything, but thank you. Um, I'll do better. Some, sometimes I forget that I talk to that many people, different people in different uh, circumstances and at varying different levels. You know, cause I'm just sat here working for a company like you guys do and then all of a sudden I'm on a camera potentially talking to tens of thousands of people. Yeah, it's sometimes tricky to, uh, to differentiate and, and switch gears. But yes, that'll do. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>